Anne-Marie. Welcome back if you join me usually or have seen me before and a warm welcome to you for the first time if this is your first time with me. Um, as you can see, I never usually start kneeling down. It's a little bit funny for me, uh, but I'm going to try something a bit different tonight. I thought it might be interesting to do a little bit more kind of floor-based warm-up uh, and a bit of variety, something different. So see what you think. Um, I'd love to hear what you think about it at the end of the session. Um, a kit that you will need tonight, you need your mat, head pad, uh, head cushion if you've got it, either of those, both of those, fantastic. Um, and uh, I'm planning to use a band or a strap just for a stretch, so if you don't have it, don't panic, but anything like a dressing gown, belt, anything like that, or one of the stretchy bands, all those things would be great. Don't panic if you don't have it, I will give you some alternatives, so don't worry, I'll just get those out of the way. We're going to start just for a couple of minutes, as we always do, just having some nice, relaxing, calm breathing, which also lets you set yourself up with all your technology and make sure that we're all together when we get going. So just in this, if you can't be kneeling, otherwise sitting down, sitting on a chair, sitting on a sofa, you can stand up, I don't mind, we're just going to have a little breathe out, okay? So when you're ready, you can breathe in with me. Two, three, four, and hold. Two, three four and out, two, three, four and hold, two, three, four, breathe in, two, three, four and hold, two, three, four, breathe out, two, three, four and hold, two, three, four and in, two, three, four and hold, two, Three, four, breathe out. Two, three, four, and hold. Two, couple more with me. In. Hold it there. Out. Hold it there. Last one. In. Hold. And out. Awesome, it's fantastic. I'm so pleased you're joining me again. Um, always all the same, usual bits and bobs. Please, if I do anything, suggest anything that is not comfy to you, that hurts, that makes that you really just don't like, please do an alternative. I'll try and give you lots of alternatives as we're going, but if it's just not working for you, take a break, take a stretch, do whatever you need to do, and just don't do anything that's going to make you feel any worse. Just do the stuff that's going to make you feel fantastic by the end of the session. Okay. Right, we're actually going to start on our backs. This is really, really unusual for me, so let's try it. Let's do it tonight. So start on your backs, coming down however it is comfy for you. And when you're in this supine position, we're going to find neutral in this position tonight. So we'll start with our feet together. Take the heels out, take the toes out. So the feet, knees and hips are nicely aligned. And we're just going to flex and point the feet. So in the same way we would when we're standing up, I'm just encouraging you to open out the toes, really stretch out and through, get some movement into the ankles. Okay, and if one at a time, we just bring the foot up, and if you want to, you can hold onto the leg if you'd like to. Otherwise, just bring the foot up. We're just going to roll through the ankle. So rolling in one direction, and taking it in the other direction. Sit and bring it back down just to get us towards, we'll do the other side, this really nice neutral position. And bringing it back down. So our legs should be kind of a decent distance between the feet and the bottom. If you normally find a good alignment on your back, you'd like to have some kind of cushion behind your head, that's fine. Uh, if you don't need it, then by all means stick with me and just stick flat on the floor. So, knees hip distance apart, coming up to the pelvis. Let's really rock through the pelvis in this lying position. So you're doing this in a slightly different way to when you're standing because you've not got that kind of weight going all the way down through the spine. You've got a little bit less tension in the position and maybe that means you can get to a different position. So in addition to when we're on our feet doing this, usually it's just a tip forward, it's a tip back. If you want to, you can also kind of rock a little bit to the side and just find that neutral position side to side if you wish. 
Okay, just allow yourself a little bit extra movement in that. So when you're ready, you've gone kind of forwards, back, side to side, let's find neutral there. So neutral, you'll just settle a small gap under your lower back. So you just perhaps pop a couple of fingers underneath, but it's that little arch in the small of the back. Okay, so moving up through the spine. Same thing as always, pulling down through the tailbone, pulling up all the way through the spine. So making yourself really nice and long. So when we're lying on our backs also, because you've got the weight of your shoulders, they do nicely sink backwards, but if you wish to, you can bring those shoulders forwards up and then draw the shoulder blades down your back. So you're almost trying to reach your fingertips down to your toes while opening out of the chest. So hands will probably naturally fall up, maybe towards the ceiling, maybe in towards the legs, but you're, you're nice and open at the chest. The chest is allowed to just fall a little bit heavy, the shoulders a little bit heavy towards the mat and opening out. And depending whether you've got a cushion under your head, whichever situation, you should be able to comfortably look kind of straight up towards the ceiling. So chin and eyes just pointing straight up towards the ceiling, however is comfy behind the back of your head is fine. Okay, so we've got neutral lying down, it's quite nice. I'm going to do a really full and wide breathing from here. So when you're ready, as you breathe in, expanding out through the ribcage. Now you can do what we would normally do when we're standing as well. Just allow the fingers to rest across the front of the ribcage. And as you breathe in, fingertips ease apart. As you breathe out, they come back together. So whilst we're allowing our hands onto the ribcage, we're doing that without taking our shoulders up towards our ears. We're still keeping it nice and relaxed. Full of my breathing. And from here, we're going to think about our core contraction. Now tonight, we're going to have a go with that hipster belt analogy. So you've got 10 notches on the belt. When you're ready, on your next full of my breath in, breathe in and draw into the 10th notch on that belt. So you're really tightening, really nice and tight around those hips and kind of all gets tense, just down here on your fingertips. It just gets all tense, a little bit of tension inside the crease of the legs and release. And enjoy that release. <laughs> okay, and when you're next, follow my breath and breathe in. And goes that fifth notch on the belt. So you've just got some tension here, but actually you can breathe through, you can talk through, you probably don't want to hold it for too long, but it's all it's all okay. You can just breathe through and release. Lovely. And on the next full of white breath, then breathe in. We're going to take it to the third notch on the belt. And this is where we're aiming to hold it tonight. So you've still got a little bit of tension, a little bit of tightening around the pelvis. You might prefer the sensation of drawing up. The pelvic floor inside the body. Okay, so here's where we're going to begin. So we're going to warm up from here and we'll start with some angel wings. So I don't know if you've had snow um, a few weeks ago, we did have it here um, and had a great time and my wonderful children are making snow angels. <laughs> so here's your chance. <laughs> if you're on a really nice thick pile of carpet you can make carpet angels. Awesome. <laughs> it doesn't really work in here. <laughs> I could just get scratches on the back of my arm on this floor. Um, but just allowing the arms to sweep up and down. So the shoulder blades are still remaining kind of drawn down towards the back pockets. The shoulders aren't really catching up in towards the ears or anything like that, but we've got a really nice wide sweeping movement. So uh, this may indicate whether you have moved the coffee table far enough away, <laughs> all the drinks on the floor that you're currently knocking over, all those things, it's all good. <laughs> Okay, a big sweeping movement. It's not the same working out at home, is it? There's all sorts of hazards. Do safety first, guys, safety first. Wonderful. All right, release that there. And from here, we're going to do some dumb waist while we're lying down. So let the arms, the shoulders relax down, or just bend up at the elbows. So the hands are pointing kind of up above your head, um, the thumbs are out to the side. But the palms are kind of roughly in line with the elbows, give or take. And we'll just go one at a time to start with. So you've got to feel this sensation of something like the pressure of your shoulder blade into the floor. Obviously you don't normally get that when they're standing and relaxing. But just be mindful of it, just think about it. I mean, it's not a problem, it's all fine. 
it's the sensation of that kind of movement of the shoulder blade as you ease the arm around. And if you'd like to, you can do both at the same time. Now because you've got a constrained here movement here as well, haven't you? The elbows can't go any further back. And actually, possibly by having the arms rested on the floor, you're preventing them maybe sometimes you would naturally let the elbows draw further forwards. So it might constrain slightly your normal range of motion. But you're working with that, you're working in this position to see how far you can go. So how far kind of how close can your thumbs get to the floor? Maybe you're too flexible when your thumbs get all the way down. That's my, my aren't quite there, but that's all good. It's all good. But try to keep the elbows in towards the waist as you're doing it. Lovely. So we're going to release that there. And we're going to do some gentle abdominal curls. So maintaining this neutral position, kind of from the breastbone down. If you want to, you can take your hands, form some cups with the hands, hold them around the ears, maybe. If you tend to get a little bit of neck pain doing this, you can have two fingers behind the back of your head just to support the weight of your head if you prefer. But we're just going to gently ease the head and shoulders up without moving that curvature in the lower part of the spine. Kind of traditional old school Jane Fonda aerobics classes, we used to suggest that people press that lower part of the spine in towards the floor and just encouraging you to keep that distance behind kind of the tummy button, that distance away from the floor constant. So we're getting a little bit of flexion into the upper part of the spine. Now what you'll note is I'm keeping a fairly good distance between the chin and the chest. So imagine you've got like a grapefruit to big orange. So the sensation is flexion in the upper part of the spine. Okay, and release that. And this time instead, we're going to use our fingers out to the side, so hands down, uh, or palms pointing up towards the ceiling, and we're just going to reach down to the side. So we've got that side flexion this time instead. A little bit of movement, you might just be raised, I'm finding I'm raising just my head and shoulders an inch or two off the floor, not too far. We do like imperial measurements. <laughs> right, to reach it down. So you've got that side flexion, relax it, it's quite hard work actually doing that. Um, <laughs> from here, we want to grab onto one leg and bring the legs in, and we're just going to rock the knees gently in and back. And this time we will allow that lower back to come in towards the floor, so we're getting a little bit of a flexion at the bottom of the spine. So normally when we're standing at some point, we'd be doing some standing roll up, roll down. We've worked the upper part of our spine, so we've been doing the curls. We're just giving a little bit of flexion into the lower part of the spine by drawing those knees in and allowing them to come back. Okay, and from here, if we release the legs down, you can take one down, take the other down, take the feet a little bit wider. We're going to do some gentle hip rolls. So you can have your arms wide if you have the space and you'd like to. You might want to cactus arms. It's fine if you want to keep your hands down by your waist. But just getting some rotation around through the hips, movement through the hips, movement through the lower part of the spine, a little bit of flexion or rotation around that lower part of the spine. Wonderful. Okay. And from here, release, relax that, bring the arms back down to where they were naturally lying when we aligned ourselves. And we're just gonna do a little leg slide. So make sure you've got that core contraction You've got the third notch on the belt going, and we're just going to slide out and slide in. So now we're getting some movements in the flexion and extension of the hip joint and the knee joint. And if you'd like to, to increase the range of this movement, next time the leg comes in, you can bring it all the way up and then let it down. And the next time, other side. Is away, all the way in, bring it down. Away, all the way in, bring it down. We're just making sure we're getting a really nice range of movement into the hips and into the knee joint. Okay, just one more. 
Lovely. And now we're going to make sure those ankles are nice and warm. So you can straighten out through the legs. I'm just going to point and flex the toes. So that pointing, plantar flexion, and flexing, flexing of the toes up towards the ceiling, dorsiflexion. So you're getting that ankle movement and mobility. Okay, still with a neutral upper body. Now we can do some, draw some circles with our toes. So you can either go both in the same direction, I'm kind of doing opposite ways, and then I'm going to switch directions. Oh, that's difficult actually. Takes a bit of brain power, that one. I don't know why. <laughs> it's harder than it looks. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh dear. <laughs> right, and release and relax. So hopefully, you still feel all quite nice and more moved. We've had a nice little movement there. Now, here's the exciting bit. Balancing when you're lying down. <laughs> Got a couple of ideas. See what you think. First one, roll over onto your side. Okay, and I would like you, if it's comfy for you to do so, we're going to do some torpedo. So nice long arm on the bottom. And this is going to be strength work as well. Sometimes those balances really are, aren't they? So I want you to stretch out. So first of all, it might be enough for you just having this stretch position and trying not to roll over. Okay, and if this is, this is enough for you, that's absolutely fine. Okay, it's just this long sideline position. You don't need to be kind of really stretching and stretching in each toes. It's just lengthening rather than stretching, okay? If this feels all right and you'd like to give it a go, you can start by bringing the legs up. And that will up the game on the balance. And it will also up the game on the strength. So I'm encouraging you, as we always do on our side now, you've still got a little tiny gap under the waist and that top hip is pushed away as we would be doing this as we were doing it as a normal exercise. And if that feels okay, you can press down with the bottom hand and bring the body up. Okay, so I've still got a little tiny gap under my waist. If I bring the body up, top arms up, you could have the top arm pointing up towards the ceiling. Now, if you'd like to, here's the fun, bring that bottom arm up. So now you've got much less contact with the floor. And there's a lot of strength going on. And you're trying that lying balance. So this is one you can try at any time when you're going to bed. <laughs> Might get some funny looks by the other half, right? <laughs> How's that feeling? It's actually quite hard, right? It's in a healthy up position. Keeping the neck neutral, so don't be tempted to strain the neck up. Still keep the neck fairly neutral. So keeping the neck in line. Five, four, three, two, one. Hey, relax, please. Awesome, we're going to try that on the other side. So you obviously don't need to, I'm going to swing round because otherwise it'll be a bit funny if I've got my back to you. If you wish to swing round, by all means do. But you don't need to. Okay, so if, again, if it's comfy on that shoulder, if not, you can always have your head cushion if you prefer. And, you know, just hold this shoulder, the arm in towards the body if it's not so comfy lying on your shoulder. There are alternatives. So we'll just start as we did before. So I'm starting fairly long. Top hip pushed away gently, there's a little gap under the waist. And when you're ready, if you wish to, bring the legs up. So you might have been happy in this side lying position. You might actually need, still need the hand in front for the side lying. That's fine. But if you wish to, you can take the legs away from the floor. So we've got that strength built in again. We've got the length through the spine. Now if you want to, you can kind of turn the bottom palm down towards the floor or the back of the hand down towards the floor, whichever you prefer. And gently lift the upper body as well. Maybe you'd like to prefer to have the hand pointing up towards the ceiling. Maybe you prefer to keep it long. So a couple of options there. And if you wish to, bring that top arm, uh, the bottom arm, excuse me, off the floor. So nice and long. So this is strength. This is balance lying down. Again, keep the neck nice and neutral. Keep the gap under the waist. Holding the position. Awesome. Weren't expecting this tonight, were you? <laughs> oh, was I? It's exciting, isn't it? Five, four, three, two, one, and relax, release. Fantastic. Right, one more balance. We're still going to stay down, but what we're going to do is sit up. So we're not quite lying down on the floor, but we're not standing up again. 
This time, this really is a good one for the strength in the core. So we're going to do a version of kind of a Russian twist, either, either a boat or a Russian twist. So starting sitting up nice and tall, if that's comfortable for you to do so. If you need to be a little bit leaned back, that's fine as well. Because from here, we'll start balancing by just going up onto your tiptoes, okay? So it's optional whether you're holding on, you could have the arms wide if you're feeling strong in the core and you're comfortable in this position, but start with toes just hitching the ground. And if you'd like to, you can just bring them up. Don't have to be super high. So I'm not aiming for crazy hamstring flexibility. What I'm aiming for is a balance and holding the static posture if you can. If you'd like to up the game on the strength aspect, take the arms out. So the spine is on, we've got a neutral spine here. So I'm not curving into it. Nice neutral spine. Working the core, nice and long and strong, shoulder blades still drawn down the back, so the spine is long. Now if you're quite happy in this pose and you'd like to uh, change it a little bit, we can do a little Russian twist with it. So just taking the shoulders round as we go. So the lower body, kind of waist down, isn't moving, I'm just twisting the upper body. So it's like a Russian twist, so you can imagine, or you could be holding if you wish, something like a cushion. A ball in between your hands, something like that. A cat, I think that would work. Is that a two year old? I mean, that's quite hard. It's probably a bit big. Go for a baby if you've got one around. They'll be having a wave at a time. Or you can just do it with your hands. Okay. So five, four, three, two, one. Bring it down. That's hard work, isn't it? It's good though, it's good. You've got abs of steel. You're balanced, you're strong, awesome. Let's get down onto our backs again then. So if you'd like, you hang onto your legs as you roll down. So tonight I've designed this a little bit um, more in combinations uh, than usually. So some of the moves tonight you'll see have been brought into two or three different moves together to give you a little feel of combination and flow tonight. We're gonna start though, first of all, with a good old brain teaser. So let's find our neutral position. So we've already found neutral on our backs tonight, but I just want to encourage you to make sure that you've got that neutral lower part of the spine. So doing this little pelvic tilting, that pencil on the front of your pelvis, getting the neutral position so the pencil ends up pointing straight up towards the ceiling, small gap under the lower back, shoulder blades drawn down, arms nice and wide and relaxed, shoulders heavy in towards the mat. From here, when you're ready, Breathe in, switch on the core, we're just going to bring one leg up to 90 degrees if that's comfy. And what we're aiming for tonight is a bicycle move. So if you would prefer to do that kind of one leg at a time, by all means do that. But if you think you would be comfortable to do so, then we're going to go both legs. If you're doing one leg at a time, I would suggest maybe you do four or five rotations, then bring the leg down, switch legs, okay? But if you would like to join me, we've got one leg up, still got the core switched on, on your next breath out, bring the other leg up, and we're going to start cycling. So the temptation here is to draw those shoulders up, you're like, oh my goodness, I've got to hold on. Just relax it down. If you need to, imagine you've got your hands on the handlebars. So just the upper arms are just floppy against the floor, the wrists are nice and floppy, and you've got that sensation. You've almost got handlebars to go on for. Now, not clinging on for dear life, just nice and relaxed. Okay, the knees are not coming particularly past the hips, so keeping them towards the lower part of the legs. The core is strong, so the back, the gap under the back is nice and rigid and maintained, and you're holding your core to hold this position. So, if this has been going well, here's the brain teaser. We're going to switch directions when you're ready. So it's doing those circles in the opposite direction. So it's just making sure you keep that distance. If you'd like to, you can use the hands just to give yourself a little bit of a bumper. And that will stop you bringing the knees right over the chest. So you can just keep them just kind of around where you want the thighs to not go past, if you wish. Or you can keep with your, oh I keep going forwards and backwards, um, you can keep with your bicycle hands. Okay, and when you're ready, we're going to take one leg down, 
take the other leg down, all somewhere like that. It's so hard on your brain, on your hip flexors, on everything. <laughs> so we're going to give our hip flexors a release. So bring one leg in towards the body, let the other leg extend away from you, and just hold it there. Hold it there. And relax. switch sides. So bringing that other leg in towards the body. Allowing the opposite leg to stretch away. So I do want to build in tonight as well plenty of chances for stretching. Absolutely. You're having a good old stretch tonight. So we're going to relax that there. We're just going to do some hip rolls. So taking the feet slightly wider than they'd normally be, maybe about to the edge of your mat or so. Again, if you want to have the arms wide, we do exactly what we did in the warm up. We're going to allow ourselves to take it nice and slow and steady, and we will have some held stretches here tonight as well. So the legs flopping over side to side. Just trying to keep the shoulder blades down onto the floor, allowing the knees to go side to side, like the windscreen wipers. And next time they come over towards me, just let them hold it there. You're going to take the back leg over the top. So taking it across, you can use the hand if you wish, to hold that knee down, take the opposite arm out and looking over that back shoulder. So you've got the stretch, that twist through the spine, the shoulder blades gently pinned in towards the mat and you can, as I mentioned, if you wish to use your hand, just to ease the leg gently towards the floor at the front. And relax, we'll bring that leg back in, let the legs flop over to the other side, and take that top leg across again. Okay, so you've got the opposite direction, you're looking over the arm that's remaining on the floor, you've got the other hand gently easing the leg towards the mat. Really nice stretch, a really nice twist on the lower part of the spine. I'm just enjoying it, just chilling out. position we're going to do some shoulder bridging though so this time if you did have a cushion or anything behind your head for the last move please take it away now you don't need it for this one but this is going to end up being a little sequence so to start with let's get ourselves into neutral position ready for shoulder bridge so bringing the feet closer in towards the bottom this time but the feet knees and hips are still in line so you might just want to rock through the pelvis so that you get that neutral position under the back again feels a little bit different with the feet closer in towards the bottom. Shoulder blades still drawn down the back towards the back pockets. Chest nice and open, nice and heavy. Hands probably pointing up towards the ceiling. So when you're ready, just release the tension. Just If you need to give your legs a wobble, if you just need to relax, release, do what you need to do. Let's get that full and wide breathing. And then do a next full and wide breath in. Breathe in. Switch on the core, put on the hips to belt, and when you're ready on the breath out, I'm going to tilt the pelvis so the hips pointing up towards the ceiling, and then gradually working up through the spine. So we'll have two or three of those where they're nice and slow and controlled, and you are just focusing on releasing any tension, any stickiness between vertebrae 
Just that gradual lifting up, squeezing the glutes together, pelvis nice and high, and bringing it back down and just really slowly. I want you to really focus on the movement of the independent vertebrae. So you've still got that core switched on throughout. As you bring it down, you're always coming back through to neutral. So it's a bit of a change tonight, rather than when we're comfortable in this, moving on to adding arms or adding something with the legs, what we're going to add on when we get back to neutral is a roll up in the other direction. Now, if you can't normally get up in the other direction, by all means, extend one leg, grab the other, and use that leg to help you come up, okay? And that's fine. So you're coming up to that neutral position, and from here, if you go around the ears, and we're going to do a neck pull forwards. So it's just peeling, so you're sitting against a wall, that peeling down, peeling up. And then from here we're going back down onto our back. So again, if you don't normally do a full roll down, roll up, you can use the leg to get you down, come back to the start of that shoulder bridge position. So there's no rush in any part of this. Just take it at your own pace. So back to shoulder bridge, back to neutral when you're ready, peeling up through the spine. So we're gonna to attempt to keep it reasonably flowing but in no way to rush. Now, if you do normally find it okay to do a roll up, you can just extend legs, or maybe if you prefer to keep the bent, keep the bent, and start that rolling up. So you either use your leg to help you, or you didn't, that's the option. And from here, sitting up, coming up through neutral, and then just tilt the head, and gently pull that spine, gently, gently forwards. So you're pulling, peeling off a wall behind you, and again going back, however it's comfy for you. So you can do it like a roll up, or you could have used the leg to help you. And you're coming back to neutral. Now there is kind of an option here as well, if you want to get your belt involved, we'll use it on the way up next time, I'll show you what I mean. Okay. So again, we're going to that shoulder bridge, peeling up. Coming back down. And if you'd like to use your belt, it's a little bit convoluted, but we'll get there. Pop it around one of your feet. And you can use that to press that heel down and away to bring you up. So as you come up, you're coming up with a curved spine as you would with a roll up. And you can probably just leave it there to be honest. And then neck pull forwards, bringing it back up to neutral. And if you were using the belt, you wanted to try that option, then you curl it back down. And bring it back down. And when you get it down, you can release the leg, get rid of the belt, bring the feet in, and we'll go back to the shoulder bridge. So there's a few options there to allow you to transition. Obviously, it's all been a bit too much, just stick with the shoulder bridge, or stick with the roll up, roll down. I don't mind. Obviously, I won't even know. <laughs> fine. <laughs> Unless you want to tell me, that's fine too. Okay. <laughs> but choose your own method and your own version of this move. What I'm trying to get you through is strength through a curved spine, working the abdominals in a controlled manner, getting wonderful flexion into the spine as well, and mobility. So there's a lot going on here. It's mobility, it's strength, and it's really working a lot of your body. Okay, so my personal preference on these is to just transition straight from the bridge into the roll up, roll down, into the neck pull. And then bringing it back down, maybe releasing the arms. I can appreciate that's a little bit more complex than we would normally do any of those moves when we have them independently, but it makes it a bit of a change and maybe a bit of a different emphasis to this move. Because usually on the shoulder bridge, you'd be less 
involving the abs in that part of the move. So do each time, come back to neutral. So you've got neutral in the middle a number of times here. You've got the neutral every time you get back onto the floor, come back to neutral, bring the legs in, and we're shoulder bridging from neutral. You've got remembering to switch on the core each time. So back to neutral and extend the legs while they're in neutral. Okay, and then you've got this option on the run up. Coming to seated neutral. And of course, with the roll up, you don't have to have the legs straight. You might have chosen them to be bent. You might choose to hold on to the legs to help you up and down. Because usually with our roll up, it's kind of optional whether you get all the way down. So if you don't normally get all the way down, you probably want to grab onto the legs for that little bit of extra uh, pull that you've got. And you may just have been continuing through with the shoulder bridges and not been super worried about doing the right, that's fine. So neutral, neck pull, neutral, and bring it back down. Okay, we're going to do one more. So just do this in the context of one more. So maybe you're actually a bit worn out already with this one. And you'd like to make this an easier version. Or maybe actually this is the one you're really going to do a slightly harder version than you have before. See how it goes. So up to neutral, neck pull, back to neutral and we'll get back down to the ground. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Fantastic work guys, awesome, that's a hard one, that's a hard one. And we will uh, Congratulate ourselves with a lovely stretch. So if you do have a band and you'd like to use it, band, belt, whatever you've got, we're going to do a hamstring stretch. If you don't have one, just grab behind the back of your leg. Okay, it's absolutely fine. But if you do have one and you'd like to use it, pop it around the arch of your foot. So let the other leg extend away. The aim of the game is to get this leg that's in the air nice and straight. So this is one of the rare occasions I suggest, you know, try and lock that knee out if you can, it's comfy you want that leg straight as you're drawing it in towards the body and just everyone's going to feel a little bit different on this where their kind of point of a nice stretchy tension is so not pain but just that stretching sensation by allowing the other leg down towards the ground we're pinning the hips down and just allowing the hamstring to be the part that's stretching rather than going into the lower part of the back When you're ready, nice big full of my breath in. As you breathe out, just ease another half an inch if you've got it. A little bit close. We're just going to develop this stretch tonight very gently. Fantastic. And we're going to release that. So allow the leg to come back up and gently release tension in the belt. The leg down, we're going to switch sides. Good. Go around to the other foot. You've got your belt. Right. Get that leg straight up in the air, extend the other leg away. So, really straightening out that leg that's up and pinning the hips down. Just release any tension. Temptation is if you have got a belt, it's just to Grip off the deal line, shoulders up by the ears, just release them down, just relax, release. When you're ready, the next one of my breath in, breathe in, and as you breathe out, just ease that in towards the body, that foot, just gently closer towards the head, if you can. It's a lovely old stretch, hamstring stretch. Feels good to me. And release and relax that there. And we're also going to do a nice little glute stretch. So you can get rid of the band, we're done with that. Just 
pop it out of the way. Okay, we're going to take ankle over to the opposite knee and draw that far leg in towards the body. So as I said, we're really going to make a bit of a nice stretchy session tonight as well. Because that's so strange, not having stood up. I'm not used to that, I tell you. Lovely. You should be getting that stretch down onto the glutes, moving the outer part of the thigh, but drawing that opposite leg in if it's comfy to do so. We'll release that to the other end and across. If it's a bit too much bringing that leg in, you can use the hand and ease the in, inside part of the bent leg away from you, or you can bring the far leg in, or if it's comfy, you can extend up that far leg as well. So you've really got kind of more towards a figure four on your legs. Just Easing the leg in and the knee on the bent leg away. Fantastic, we're going to release that. Now I want you to come up sitting or through sitting. So if you want to grab onto a leg and help yourself come up, we're going to actually come up to a kneeling position tonight. I'm going to do some side kick kneeling. We did do this a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, but I do remember doing it. Um, so how this one starts, we're going to set up in a kneeling position. So knees kind of directly under the hips, about hip width apart. And again, we did have this uh, the question about whether you want to put your hands, the weight of your hand onto the palm of your hand, or if that's not comfy, you can use it onto your fist, okay? So just be mindful about your wrist, shoulder, those kind of things, if this doesn't normally work for you. So we'll start in this direction. So starting in a neutral upright position, just leaning over, and from here, extending the far leg away. So it's a fairly straight line, kind of, through the centre line of the spine and down through that bottom leg. If you wish to, you can have the top arm raised up towards the ceiling or have it on your hips, I don't mind. When you're ready, breathe in, switch on the core. As you breathe out, just gently ease that leg up, not too far, just a few inches. And then we're going to swing, and where by swing I mean very controlled movement, forwards and backwards on the leg. So the body is as though you're between two panes of glass. We're going for three forward and back movements on the leg, and then bring it down. When you're ready, bring it up. So we've got that core contraction. You can feel the work in the outer part of the thigh because you're holding out across the thigh. You open the hip flexor to draw it forward, the glutes draw it backwards. You don't need to hyperextend at the back. You don't need to go super far on the way back. So don't allow the body to be flexing in the spine. Okay, the movement is movement at the hip rather than collapsing of the spine. I'll just show you what I mean. You're not swinging, okay? This isn't the move, super controlled on the other part of the body. We're just going to do one more. And it's that forwards and back. Lovely. And bring it down, and then release. And go back down onto your knees. How was that? Gosh, that's so, that's so good, wasn't it? <laughs> Just holding on to the shoelace area of the foot, pushing the knee away. Got a nice stretch through that quad at the front. Okay. So we're going to come up through the middle because we need to do the other side. So up through the middle, we're going to start again in our kneeling position. So starting in kneeling, if it's comfy to do so, can't bring the weight over to the side. Okay, so this body, again, is between two panes of glass. I quite like having the arm raised, I think that works quite nicely. So breathe in, switch on the core. As you breathe out, lift the leg. And it's a smooth and controlled forwards and back swing. Wonderful. And around three forward and back before it comes down. And then bring it back up. 
So the bringing it back up, again, it's not particularly causing you to flex in the side of the spine. It's not that big. Fantastic, release it down. Your alternative to this, if this doesn't work with you, you can do that side lying side kick. So this could be lying completely on the side of your body, maybe supported under the head with your arm, and it's just raising the leg forwards and back, trying to maintain neutral curves throughout the spine, and kind of a straight up down line, but a neutral, kind of a lower back curve, curve under the neck. All those good things that we know hold us in a lovely position. Okay, just one more to go. Oh, sweep the floor then. <laughs> and release, relax. Okay, so coming back to that middle, we're going to go for that quad stretch again. So if it's comfy to do so, come down towards your elbow. And we're just going to straighten out enough that we can hold on to the shoelace area of the foot or the back of the trousers, whatever works. Keeping the knees, well, keeping that top knee pointed away from you, pushing the hip forward. Lovely. So from here, release that down. We're actually going to do some inner thigh stretches. So coming back to the middle, I'm just going to have a nice little stretch here. So you're going to be basically on all fours to start with, but take one leg out to the side. If you can get the foot flat down onto the ground, so you have like a little twist in the ankle if that's comfy, and just going to push the hips down and behind you and feel that stretch into the inner thigh. So it's that all fours position. Just a gentle hips pushing gently back. As I said, if it's comfy, having the foot kind of fairly flat onto the floor. So tonight's a little bit more leg stretching and that. Hip stretching than we might normally do. Lovely, and release that. And we're going to go for a hip flexor stretch here. So, Keeping the knee that was down, let's keep it down. We're going to take a nice big step forwards, and by big step, my hips are forwards of my back knee. So the front knee is just over the ankle. I can show you from the side, it might make more sense from the side. But I'm kind of overextending here because this is where I'm aiming for to stretch. So from this position, push the hips forwards and down towards that front ankle, feeling a lovely stretch down the front of the leg. Now you do have a few options with the arms, you can just, just keep them here if you prefer. You could really open out of the chest if you wish. Or another nice one that I really quite like is twisting over the bent knee. So twisting over, so you reach behind with one hand and reach in front with the other and you can use the forearm of this front arm just to press into the knee to twist you around gently. So you've got that hip flexor stretch. This is the main stretch we're going for. So if you lose that hip flexor stretch, just come back to that. But you've added on this lovely twisting stretch for the upper body. And release that there. We're going to do the inside thigh stretch on the other side. So starting back where we were, pretty much in all fours to start with. Taking the leg out to the side, allow the foot to go flat onto the floor and you're pushing the hips back and down. And that should really open out that inner thigh region. And if you can afford to with stretching, holding it just those few extra seconds does really help it to settle in. It does really help it to do its best effect. If you stretch and it's a bit too quick, you're not actually giving your body time to adjust and adapt. So let's bring that back and we'll do that hip flexor stretch again. So we'll show you from the front this time. So the knee that was down, keep it down. I have kind of overstepped forward. 
such that my hip is past my front knee, but my front knee is over the ankle, the back hip is past the, the back knee. So pushing the body weight forwards and down, got a lovely stretch down that side here. And again, we've got that option again, you can open out of the chest, so looking up, opening out, getting a nice stretch all the way through the front of the body and the chest. Or you may wish to go for that twist where I'm using the forearm to press into that front leg. Ooh, got a wobble. <laughs> and taking the other arm back and such a lovely, long, 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 comfy stretch. You're going to come back to all fours, so we'll come back to all fours on our mats properly. So, from here, we're going to go through some rounds of cat and cow, and really get a nice stretch through the length of the back. So, let's start in the neutral position. Just have a quick check knees under and uh, hips, ankles directly behind. So, if you look down kind of through your legs, you might just about see your big toes, not a lot else. And let's get some flexion and extension through the length of the spine. So if you draw the shoulder blades up towards the ceiling, the head drops down, take the tummy down, the head will pop up. So all the way through the movement of the spine. And I want to spend a little bit of time here. So just have a think about where for you that would feel good. Do you want to ease that body weight forwards maybe? Do you want to work on the upper back a little bit more? Keep that head drop down, the top of the back, the shoulders, or do you want to ease it back here? Pushing the hips down and back towards the mat. Or you could just be staying in this central position, maybe just working through the two extremes. Or maybe it's that kind of twist you need tonight, that little bit of tension in the side. And maybe in this side, you might just want to rock the hips gently forwards and backwards. So easing the stretch through the spine or on the other side. Quite often there is just one particular movement or particular position that just is exactly what you need to unclick whatever you've been doing to your back and just relax it through. So if there is somewhere, some place that feels good to you, go for that one. Okay. Now from here we're going to come back to neutral. We're going to do some thread the needle. Actually, I'll take my glasses off and fall off. Uh, we'll do some thread the needle. So from starting from our neutral position, when you're ready, breathe in, switch in the core. As you breathe out, take one arm, thread it under the other, allow the head to come down towards the mat, maybe pushing the weight on the side of the head or onto the cheek and opening up in the other direction. So it's a full flowing movement. You're going to twist, so the aim is to get the chest as far in as you can in both directions. So you're getting that full rotation. And when you've done three or four on one side, we'll switch sides. Okay. So at the bottom, you have the option, should you so wish, to hold it there. Just get a nice shoulder stretch. So if you choose to hold it here, just put the weight into the shoulder, press the um, head down, that's fine. But just get a stretch through the shoulder. And if you prefer to, you can come back up. You might keep it continuous. You might prefer this opening out stretch here where you're twisting in the opposite direction. Or you might try to keep going. Right. Do another set on the other side. Now I did talk about combinations tonight. We're going to build this into a combination as well. So we'll do three more on this side. 
And the combination we're going to go for is two press ups with a down dog and then two through the needles. Okay, so coming back to this neutral, we're going to go for tricep press ups tonight. So choosing your press up option, making sure the spine is long. Gonna go down, press up through the palm of the hands, two press ups. Okay, bring the nose towards the floor, tuck the toes straight out through the legs. So you're getting into a little stretch here, down dog. You might want to walk the feet in, or maybe they're at a good position, or walk them out to get in a really comfy position. Pushing the hips up towards the ceiling, pressing the chest down towards the ankles, and then coming back down into normal all fours. We'll do two thread the needle. So it's two press ups, a down dog, two thread the needle on each side. So just a little combination to play with. Okay, so the press ups are easier the closer in the nose gets towards the legs. So we'll go for a tricep push up. The elbows are coming down towards the waist and pressing up through the palm of the hands. And then pop ups down dog, so tuck the toes, hips up to the ceiling. And if you want to while you're here, you can walk the dog. So just allowing the heels to alternate towards the floor as you're walking through the feet. That feels so nice. Oh my goodness. Feels great on the calves. Okay. And then popping it back down, we're going to go thread the needle. And we're just going to do this combination through one more time. Okay, so two thread the needle. So press up, choose your position to start with. So I'm going to go down to Full length down to the knees again from here. So elbows going into waist, taking it down, core still contracted, controlling your shoulders, making sure that the elbows go backwards. Okay, two press ups. We're going to bring these in, tuck the toes, hips up to down dog. And again, I think I'll walk through the dog again because that just feels amazing. at the knees if you wish to be, that's fine. But the hips nice and high, shoulders pressed kind of, armpits in towards, down towards the ankles. And bring it down, two more thread the needles, we're nearly there team. We are doing a good job. You can let the arms go nice and high over the head, or if you prefer, you can take those arms down by the feet and just chill out with the shoulders, allow them to drop down towards the floor. chest properly. You might have already had a little chest, don't know why we were doing a hip flexor stretch, but here's an opportunity to just double up on that. So if you want to, you can have the hands clasped together behind, back, or you can open out the hands and just looking up, open out through the chest, squeezing those shoulder blades together at the back. Releasing it here, we'll be working into those shoulders a little bit with the press ups, shoulders and triceps. So let's give those a little stretch while we're here. Taking the shoulder across the body, gently easing it in towards the opposite shoulder. Try not to hold on to the elbow area, so you're either just above 
or just below that elbow, but keeping this shoulder nice and relaxed down away from the ear. We'll take this into a tricep stretch. So gently push the arm back. So you can either be pressing from the front, press the arm towards the back wall, or pulling from over the top. Try not to get your head trapped. So it's just nice and comfortable above the head. Feeling the stretch in the triceps at the back of the arm. Lovely, and switch sides. Take that arm across. Bring it in towards the body. So just stretching through the outer part of that shoulder. We're going to bring it up and over into the triceps. So awesome work today, guys. There's been some brilliant flexion of the spine, some little combination moves. Uh, we've had the bicycle to work the brain. We've done some rather unusual balances. Always fun to try something a bit different. Um, I'd love to hear what you think about doing a full floor work kind of on your back style, or basically on your back style workout. It's a little bit different for us. Um, and it's great to have you with us. So thank you so much for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure. I do hope you enjoyed it. I do hope to see you again. Please feel free to like, share, uh, send me a little message. Any of those things are always much appreciated. Just to know that I'm not here on my own. <laughs> there are other people outside. Okay, have an awesome week and I will see you very soon. Okay, bye-bye.